Sri Lanka is facing a constitutional crisis. Shirani Bandanaraika, its 43rd Chief Justice, who had served on the Supreme Court for 14 years, has been removed by the country's Parliament and President in contravention of an unequivocal ruling of Sri Lanka's Court of Appeal. People opposed to her removal have suffered harassment, intimidation and death threats from persons unknown. This follows years of executive encroachment into the judicial sphere and a series of assaults, abductions and murders committed against critics of the government that have been rarely investigated and never prosecuted. In response to these events, the International Bar Association's Human Rights Institute, or IBARI, examined the case and its implications on the rule of law in Sri Lanka. The mission was conducted remotely because the Sri Lankan government refused visas for the delegation. The delegation comprised the Honourable Justice Mohamed Lawal Owais, a former Chief Justice of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Dato Param Kumaraswamy, the first United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Independence of Judges and Lawyers, Sadakat Kadri, a British barrister and the Mission Rapporteur, and Shane Keenan, a Bari Programme Lawyer. The report focuses on two issues, the removal of Chief Justice Bandranayaka and the perilous state of Sri Lanka's legal profession. As it shows, both are intimately connected. Chief Justice Bandranayaka was removed after presiding over two Supreme Court panels that gave rulings against the government, and testimony from several witnesses leaves us in no doubt that this influenced the Sri Lankan government's decision to remove her. A parliamentary select committee went on to conduct an inquiry which, though supposedly compliant with relevant rules of procedure, was hurried, secret and contrary to principles of natural justice. The Court of Appeal found that the committee's procedures were illegal and that its decision on her guilt was fundamentally flawed. Parliament nevertheless went on to remove her and the President appointed a replacement within days. In our opinion, this decision to ignore a clear expression of Sri Lankan law compounds the illegality of the Chief Justice's removal. In recent years, the rule of law in Sri Lanka has been eroding and there appears to have been a systematic effort to intimidate and discredit lawyers and others who advocate and promote a respect for human rights. 22 journalists and media activists have been murdered over the last six years and countless others have disappeared. As this report demonstrates, there has been no credible investigation in any of these cases and it identifies 16 serious crimes against lawyers journalists and human rights activists that demand the particularly urgent attention of the Sri Lankan authorities. These attacks are not phenomena to be considered in isolation. They are bound up with the removal of Chief Justice Bandanaraika. There have been at least seven incidents of actual or threatened violence against lawyers who spoke out against her impeachment. In these circumstances, sincere and systematic reforms are necessary if judicial independence is to be salvaged in Sri Lanka. The Abari report makes 10 specific recommendations, which include to the government of Sri Lanka to reinstate Chief Justice Bandanaraika and to show progress in the investigation of crimes against lawyers and journalists. To foreign governments and NGOs to exercise caution before offering assistance to officials and bodies appointed directly by the President. To the Commonwealth Secretariat the Commonwealth Ministerial Action Group and member countries of the Commonwealth to consider whether Sri Lanka is respecting the Commonwealth's core values and principles and whether its reputation will be more enhanced or tarnished if Sri Lanka were to host the next Heads of Government meeting and act as its chair in office for the next two years. <laughs>